Danny Flexen here with the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections, our weekly look back at the boxing action of the weekend just gone. It's every 4.30pm Mondays. I'm here at the Lamech Stadium in sunny Stevenage, or relatively sunny. We've just been here for the Billy Joe Saunders next fight announcement. Um, you can see videos all around that on the channel this afternoon and possibly tomorrow as well. Um, but for right now, we're going to round up the action that we saw over the weekend. So much action went on, I'm going to quickly round up some results before I go into detail with the fights that I actually watched on Saturday night. So Frank Warren's Leicester show saw Nathan Gorman take an expected 12-round unanimous decision, won every round against American trial horse Kevin Johnson. Anyone who didn't bet on that fight to go the distance is an absolute idiot. I think it was something like 8 of 13, which is buying money. I know it's a commonly used cliche, but it's true. I suppose all cliches are commonly used anyway, otherwise they wouldn't be cliches. Um, also on the Leicester show, Sam Bowen retained his British Super Featherweight title. I think it was a ninth round stoppage of Jordan McCory. Um, I haven't seen the fight yet, but I, I hear he was very impressive. He really ground the result out, broke him down, as many expected him to do. A um, lot of other fights on the Leicester show. The, big, the one that caught the most attention, and I've at least seen the end of this fight, was Sam Maxwell coming from behind against a last-minute substitute opponent. If you haven't watched it yet, get on um, BT Sport social media. I think it's on there. It's been watched so many times already. Massive right-hand knockout in the very last round. I think there was 10 seconds left. By the time the count-out was finished of the poor boxer who got chin, I think there was maybe about five seconds left. So he really, really pulled it out of the bag. Although I later read that he was actually ahead on two of the scorecards, even though most people thought he was losing. He got dropped twice early in the fight. Showed real will and determination, heroics, to come back. And it's the knockout of the year so far. I don't think anything will beat it, even though we're only in March. What I did watch... Oh, actually, before I get on to the big copper box show, the matchroom show... I should say that Sergei Lipinex knocked out Lamont Peterson in a big US fight over the weekend. I think that was last night. Um, and Lamont Peterson announced his retirement in the ring straight after. So he's been a great servant to the game. Obviously had that well-known fight with Amir Khan. Fought a lot of the best welters of his generation as well. Tough fighter. Came from a hard scrabble background, both with him and his brother Anthony Peterson. They slept on the streets. Barry Hunter, renowned trainer, played a big part in rescuing them from their predicament. and Building them up to be championship level boxers. So Lamont, best of luck in everything you do. Moving on to the Copper Box show, Shannon Courtney made her debut, that's been getting a lot of play, but I was most interested in how Lawrence Okoli would look in his fight with Wadi Camacho. He's obviously got a new, relatively new trainer still in Barry Robinson after leaving Brian O'Shaughnessy. And to be honest, I feel Okoli gets a bit of a bad rap. You know, he gets called a hugger, he gets said that he's got a negative style, the new Johnny Nelson. I mean, is there anything worse than being called that? Just kidding, Johnny. Um, but he's only really had two performances that I found boring. Against Matty Askin, of course, where there was a lot of wrestling and holding in that one. And um, previous to that, against Isaac Chamberlain, which was built up to be an O2 headliner, perhaps before it was ready, and, and it was bound to disappoint almost. But since, you know, the Luke Watkins fight, I found entertaining. A lot of his knockouts on the way up were good. And most recently, it's Waddy Camacho. Waddy came to fight, but he was up against it. You know, he had a much bigger opponent, long arms, better, better footwork, better movement. Waddy tried his best. He landed a strong left hook on Lawrence early on, but... Okoli felt it, he said afterwards, but he shook it off pretty quickly. Got the stoppage. I think it was round four, but I'd have to double check. It looked really good in the process. The finishing shot was powerful, explosive, exactly what you'd expect. You know, Okoli, people on Twitter saying he can't box. It's a ridiculously overused term. Of course he can box. He got to the Olympics with very little training. You know, he's, he's, he's a consummate boxer. He's just not as good as he can be, and he will improve. You could tell he worked on his inside game. Camacho was holding a lot more than he was, and Okoli, to his credit, was frequently trying to work inside. So maybe just get off his back, at least until the next fight. If he bores you again, fair enough. Three strikes and he's out, I understand. Also on the bill, Joshua Batsy looks amazing, as he's prone to do. Beating Liam Conroy for his first major title, the vacant British at light heavyweight. I think he's going to be moved very quick, Batsy. Looks outstanding, as he always does. He's not someone who brings you know, theatrics or histrionics. He's just a consummate. I've used that twice, I'm aware of that. He's a very good professional. He's solid. He's got poise. He's got good, good judgment of distance, great ring generalship for someone who's not that experienced as a pro. We look forward to seeing him progress further. And for Liam Conroy, he can definitely come again at domestic level. It just so happens that a vacant British title fight, one of the fighters was already beyond British level. But until we saw that one-sided domination, we wouldn't have known that. So it's fair enough. Main event, saw Charlie Edwards. We love Charlie Edwards. Great story. Obviously, his mum being ill and getting, winning the world title, dedicating it to her, presenting it to her. She had reason to smile once again as he dominated his first defence against Angel Moreno of Spain. Looked very good, Charlie. Used the angles well. Footwork was on point, as it usually is. Grant Smith in the corners got him to a really, really high level now. Easy defence for him. We look forward to seeing him 
Perhaps against, it's another result from the weekend, Andrew Selby was surprisingly knocked out by a body shot in five rounds, I think it was, in Mexico, in a fight he was winning. Um, so unfortunate for Selby, but that was a final eliminator, I believe, for the WBC flyweight title that Edwards holds. So while we won't see Edward Selby, which would have been a really good, intriguing battle of Britain, we will see, hopefully, Edwards against a teak tough Mexican. So that'll be good to watch. Martinez, Julio Martinez. He'll be coming over, maybe, or, or maybe Charlie will have to go there, although I doubt it. I think they'll want to keep him at home for that one. Um, so we look forward to seeing Charlie. Shannon Courtney, as I've said, impressed on her debut. A lot of good fights on that show. Um, we'll be back next Monday, 4.30pm, to reflect on next weekend's action. But if you can't wait that long for this ugly mug, you've got Thursday, 4.30pm, Flexpectations, where we do the weekly preview of the stuff coming up. Thanks very much, and oh, before I forget, we always like you to engage with us, so leave your comments underneath. Tell us who you thought was the standout performance from the shows you watched at the weekend. What was the best fight, and who was the best performer? That's what we want to hear. Thanks very much.